There are many things you can do in Europa Universalis 4, but one of the most interesting ones is reliving and restoring the natural borders of ancient empires. That's exactly what we'll be doing today as Tunis, or as they historically were actually called the Hafsid Dynasty, which was a Berber origin kingdom in the northern bits of Africa and the Maghreb as we know it today, which engaged in very serious pirate activities for the majority of its existence. That being said, Tunis has a unique achievement that you can get if you get the borders of the Carthaginian Empire, which include North Africa, parts of uh, Andalusia. Many of you already know about the Carthaginian Empire, but to refresh everybody's mind, the Carthaginians were originally a Phoenician colony established in 814 BC by a group of Phoenicians from the city of Tyre, as they call it in Lebanon, or Tyre, as I guess you probably know it from most of the crusader movies <laughs> the phoenicians in the uh, colony of uh, carthage absolutely flourished creating their own empire whilst the phoenicians back home got destroyed by the various invaders and their lands were ravaged alexander the great having a massive siege on the city of tyre where he literally built a bridge just to get to the island city as it was at the time and absolutely schnappel duped them because they didn't surrender a lot of historical events happen within the city of carthage like for example, the Queen of Carthage, Dido, fell in love with Aeneas, one of the survivors of the Siege of Troy by the Greeks, who eventually, descendants of Aeneas, managed to establish the city of Rome. So I guess in a way, the Roman Empire is a result of Aeneas not choosing to stay in Carthage, but later, his descendants did come back and kind of, you know, salted a little bit Carthage. My point is that this is a beautiful nation with a lot of history history and honestly if the Romans weren't as brutal as they were we probably when it came to the peace deal with Carthage we probably would still see some sort of uh, Carthaginian in modern times which obviously is not the case but I digress let's get into this video I will try to include a few more historical snippets as we progress in the campaign as well as you know show you how to absolutely maximize your campaign as the Tunisian so as Tunis we start off with 14,000 units we have quite a few ships we're actually gonna merge up up all of our ships here and we're gonna start raiding the coastlines as the Barbary Coast uh, pirates we are able to raid coastlines and as such we are gonna have most of our initial economy from raiding said coastlines we do need to be quick with it because Tlemcen and Morocco can also raid coastlines as can Fezzan so we need to be there and raid the juicy rich lands before those other pirates raid the juicy rich lands right also gonna get a few rivals at the start including Tlemcen since we're gonna be attacking the them Aragon as well and I like to go for the Papal States because it's a very easy to get rival anyway let's go over to our estates plus one mana privilege for all three of the states from the very get-go of course and because we're gonna be expanding really early on a lot and we want to keep our influence really low since the lower your influence the more crownlands you get from expansion we're gonna not give any other privileges for the time being we're gonna give the rest of them after the initial war with Lemchen happens as for our our policy here we're gonna go for the core creation cost reduction minus five percent so we have an easier time coring up all of north africa as we take it because we will be rushing for north africa really early on tunis also has its own little mission tree it's not big but it is juicy and afterwards we can form al andalus and once we formed it we can get the andalusian mission tree which is a massive mission tree with a lot of flavor we can even get our national ideas if we want now we need to have five light ships to get our first mission done that gives us a ton of permanent claims around our lands. Same for this, pacify the Berbers. We gotta conquer the small little insignificant uh, kingdoms here. Tugur, Jared, and Mazab. So we probably will piss off uh, Ivanka Trump a little bit, right? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Get it? Get it? Because... Because Jer Jared, I'm funny, damn it, I'm funny. Let's go ahead and also adopt the title of Mia Khalifa and denounce the sex practices. Also, I am going to get a juicy advisor. National manpower plus one is better than nothing, I guess. I would have liked to get a morale of armies or discipline advisor. We don't have an amazing economy, but don't let that fool you. We're going to fix that very easily with uh, all the raiding money we're getting. Let's also start queuing up light ships. We will be queuing and building more as we go along with um, raiding and getting that money I was talking 
talking about. I'm also going to get some claims on Tlemcen and uh, Jared. And I could actually make a Diplo Vassal out of Fezan if I really pushed for it. But I'm not going to do so. I'm going to revoke the guarantee because I would like to actually attack them in five years when the truce is over. I have a truce on my side only because I start with the guarantee on Fezan, which we don't really want. We do, however, want to get an alliance with the Ottomans. So we're going to try and get a royal marriage with them if possible. We're going to need to improve relations a little bit in order to do that though so keep that in mind other great alliances early on include of course the moroccans and granada both of which can be of use i'm gonna use the moroccans in my war against tlemcen maybe let's see i might also just uh use them against the spaniards afterwards the point is that you need to be careful here since uh, morocco also has a strategic interest in north africa just like everybody else in north africa has a strategic interest in north africa but getting that alliance early on whilst we consolidate the rest of north africa meaning we uh, kill off Tlemcen, the small and significant lands here means we get less aggressive expansion and more importantly we trick them we trick them into thinking that we're the good guys here okay we're trickster god dang it all right let's go ahead and radius maximus boom shaka locos let's go to the next place and use the money we got to build more of those barks which begs the question who are we barking at eh <laughs> get it because uh we're we're a dog basically we're okay Woof! 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 I'm gonna do woof woof from now every, every time I click this button, I'm gonna woof woof, okay? Is that cool with you guys? Because if it's not, then woof woof still, motherfucker! Woo! We 50 ducats from here. Let's see what Rome's gonna give us, baby. Oh, not bad whatsoever. 67 ducats from Rome. Now, I want to give you guys a little bit of a historical background on the uh, Barbary Coast Pirates. Historically speaking, the Barbary Coast Pirates raided the coastline of Europe intensely. They took millions of slaves. It is as estimated that altogether throughout the centuries it was it added up to millions of people ending up as slaves in the greater Barbary state of course these slaves would be shipped off into Africa would be shipped off into the rest of the Arab world and there's even raids that were conducted all the way into the north into Iceland albeit I think that might have been the Moroccan pirates not the Tunisian pirates not 100% sure which ones but yeah it was pretty brutal and it was one of the worst things that could happen because most of the Barbary states slaves ended up as rowers on galleys now rowers on galleys was essentially a death sentence because people would get chained up together in these galleys if the galley was sinking everybody that was a rower these slaves that were rowing on the big rowing rows what do you call the row the sticks what i don't know what you call those anyway the point is that they would sink with the ship they would be chained up they would sink with the ship they would be treated horribly if they had to poop they had to poop where they stand stood and then they would you know sit in that poop pretty it's pretty pretty brutal suffice to say it was one of the worst things that could possibly happen to you and it usually happened to the most unfortunate people basically people that live by the coastline and small peasants communities that didn't have much protection from Barbary Coast pirates, right? So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is we should be happy that we live in today's age. Wait, no, I didn't want to accept that. Yeah, we should be happy that we live in today's age and we play video games instead of having to, you know, fight off pirates off the coastline. Which also makes me wonder, why didn't people just, you know, not live on the coastline? You you would imagine they would have learned their lesson after the first few times they, they got raided, right? I don't know. Oh, hell yeah, Leon gave me 68 Dukatenstein. Hell to the S. All right, let's also make our leader a general. He is not bad. Holy mother, that's actually pretty decent. Let's also try and push over here, see if we can attack uh, Constantinople and so on, if we can raid those areas. And it looks like we can. Apparently, Fezan has not been raiding as much as they should have been. Let's go, 48. Can we get Constantinople? I would love to be raiding this. Hails, yeah, baby. 20 ducats, not bad, not bad. Okay, so this is actually too far away from our homeland to secure. No problem, let's go back then. Remember that your coastline can also get raided by the knights, which despite being knights they can also raid coastlines um if you haven't seen my knights video highly recommended really fun run overall and i'm thinking to redo that run in 1.36 if you guys want to see that let's get uh 4500 likes on this video and then we'll do a knights run also let me know in the comment section if you're interested in seeing it in general there you go we also can get the maghrebi corsairs naval doctrine that allows us to raid coastlines and we get privateer efficiency plus 25 and available loot plus 50 percent now i probably should have gotten that before i started raiding so i 
actually got more money out of raiding, but it's it's fine. The point is that you can uh, keep this doctrine, and when you change over to another government reform, say you switch away from the Barbarita, which is the one that allows the coastline raiding, you can still coastline raid with a different government reform because of this particular doctrine. So it's really awesome. It essentially ensures that you're always going to be an absolutely horrible pirate. Also take note, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but you cannot raid nations of the same religion. So keep that in mind also. This also is historic because the Muslim Barbary estates um, raiders considered infidels to be, you know, okay to be raided whilst Muslims were, you know, off the table, I guess. So then maybe people could just say, yo, I'm Muslim. Don't, don't, don't enslave me. I'm Muslim, bro. What's your name? Jonathan. That's not a Muslim name. It's, it's short for Ismail. What? That makes no sense. Yeah, it's just like a local thing, bro. And then they would be okay with it and not kill Jonathan, clearly. See, Jonathan should have just done that. Simple, simple. Now we got the uh, free company here since uh, Tlemcen has allied Tugurt and Fezan, which is awesome because it means we can uh, both wipe out these two nations as well, making it a lot easier for us to just uh, get complete control over the Maghreb early on in the campaign. Once we got that control, we can start attacking Aragon, Castile, and so on as well. Our heir is also pretty horrible, so I'm likely gonna disinherit him unless I um, lose him some other way. I don't know. Let's see. I probably will have to disinherit because I'd hate for that guy to get in charge. All right, let's get our claim on Dara and let's attack Ua to Gort, Kobolajirato, and Arrivederci to Gort. Was nice knowing you. Get an admiral as well, so we have a little bit more of an advantage over the enemy fleet. And we're gonna use our free company to take care of uh, to Gort and Fezan, whilst our main army is gonna be destroying Tlemcen, which only has 9,000 units. Take note though, Tlemcen does start with one of the best generals in the game, so you gotta be really careful when you fight that dude because he's gonna have quite a few shock pips that are gonna shock us, you know? And we built three light ships, which means we can do construct a Corsair fleet. Now, this gave us permanent claims on basically all of Tlemcen and the islands that the Carthaginian Empire had in the past, right? So, uh, once we've taken this, it's gonna be 25% cheaper to core up because permanent claims equals cheaper core creation costs by 25%. Also gonna chase down their army. I don't want them to merge up with the enemy armies and then it's gonna be a lot harder for me to defeat all the armies when they've merged up together, right? This way, when they're just 9,000 boyos and we have an easier time sieging them down as well. All right, let's siege down uh, Urgla and then we siege to Gurt so we prevent them from recruiting any more units and our claim is done on Jared. Let's uh, get that and let's get a claim on Mazab now, boys. Although, I don't think that's needed since Mazab is allied to Jared. Usually what happens here is um, Tlemcen allies either to Gurt or Mazab. I've seen them ally sometimes, not always though. Mostly it's to Gurt and Fezan. And as consequence, you getting a claim on uh, Tlemcen and a claim on Jared is likely the best uh, choice. Actually, I'm going to use my main army to take out uh, Fezan's armies. I'm doing this because it will be a lot easier for me if I uh, prevent these guys from just sieging down one province here and there. It's going to be really annoying. Otherwise, I have to unsiege it and everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Take out these two nations and then we focus on Tlemcen 100%. The only exception to this is if uh, the Moroccans attack Tlemcen, then we do have to focus on Tlemcen mostly. And I looked away for a second and these bastards actually attacked my army that was sieging down to Gort, bruh. That's why you got to pay attention in these games, guys. You got to really pay close attention. Yeah, reign of terror is over Tlemcen. It's over, I see. I got the high ground. It's a reference from Obi-Wan, the Scottish warlord. It's a movie you never heard of, but um, I did, okay? It's a real movie. I totally didn't just make that up. Who would make something like that up, okay? What do you think you're doing here? I would never do such a thing. Okay, so now that we've secured our eastern flank, we can focus 100% on taking out Tlemcen. Also take note, the reason I do this is because a lot of the times Fezan becomes a diplo vassal of the Mamluks, or they get an alliance with the Mamluks, which is gonna be really annoying, because then you're gonna have to fight the Mamluks just to take the Fezani provinces. We'll still fight the Mamluks, but it's only gonna be for lands that we're gonna be taking in the Alexandrian trade node, which is a fairly rich node overall, plus it filters down into the Genoese node, which we likely will establish ourselves in the future once we start conquering some Italian provinces, right? Or if not, just collect everything in Alexandria. That works too. Okay, can you seriously not go up to freaking a thousand percent here? What the frack, man? You, you failed to fall twice on 64%. I mean... 
three times. Are you kidding me right now? That's 64%, bro. That's not 5%, all right? Can you just calm down? Calm the snaps down right now, I tell you. Please fall. I'm gonna be really angry if you don't fall. Okay, it fell. It fell, boys. We're safe. Everybody is fine. The world can realign itself because they actually fell. Amazing. Okay. Now, uh, the former Tugurdian units became separatists that the uh, Tlemcheni had to fight. So that weakened them quite a little bit. So despite this being a Highlands and we get the debuff from attacking in the Highlands, they got significantly less troops. And it's very likely that they're actually going to lose that battle. There you go. Let's start sieging down Tlemcheni now. Now I risk the problem of Morocco attacking them and they seem to have gotten by the border. So I'm really worried about that actually happening. Oh, never mind. I just realized these guys have g gathered in the north because they're under attack. They're allied to Granada, which got attacked by Castile. So that's why they're fighting the Castilians actually. Ooh. Wee! And again, fortification didn't fall on 57% twice. I mean, brother, come on. Can you actually just for once in your life fall faster? Also cancel my alliance with Morocco. It was a mistake. I shouldn't have gotten the alliance in the first place. But now that they got attacked by the Castilians, it's going to make them really weak. And it's going to make it super easy for me to just crush them afterwards. I canceled so I can get my truce with them. And hopefully we lose that royal marriage somehow. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get one stab hit and break the uh, royal marriage when I attack. And that's the last we'll see of uh, Tlemcen. Let's go ahead and do a Fulius Annexationist. Of course, because we canceled the alliance, we get significantly more uh, aggressive expansion with Morocco, but I don't really give much of a shit about that, so it's fine. There you go. We also gained some sailors from this mission now in privateer efficiency. If we get the islands from the Aragonese, we're gonna get claims on Crete, Rhodos, and Cyprus, and if we get an alliance with the Ottomans or we're rival with them, we get claims on a few other areas as well. We have been improving relations. We're close-ish. We need to improve a little bit more. Maybe we can send a scornful insult to their rivals of um, of Austria. That should increase the relations a little bit more. There you go. 2934. Almost there. Now we can start uh, attacking these guys in our downtime, as I like to call it. Boyash Nonkidongs. Let's go. Warius Maximus. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah. I got military access. I forgot about this. Now we can attack uh, Jared and Mazol. Boom. Fairly easy uh, to take out their armies, of course. Now let's go ahead and uh, siege down what they've got here. Curious to see how much crownlands we managed to accrue so far. We got 18.4. Okay, that is real. Oh god, that's bad. Yeah, 18.4% crownlands is amazing. In just uh, six years, we managed to go from 5% to 18.4. Once we do this, uh, these couple of peace deals here, we should have enough crownlands to not get the autonomy debuff anymore. So we've basically fixed our situation when it comes to crownlands and we also have the plus one mana privilege. That's why you give it from the very beginning. Not just as Tunis, pretty much as any country you want to do that, with a couple of exceptions, of course. Oh, finally, they got uh, friendly relations with us, so that means we can get the royal marriage, and afterwards we can get the alliance. 118 with 15, 100% we can get the alliance. It's just a matter of waiting until the truce is until the peace is done, not truce is over. And I also just realized I forgot to delete the fort in Jerba. This fort is absolutely useless. You don't want it. It's literally a drain on your economy for no reason. Same goes for the fort in Dara. We're keeping the one in Kef since this one is a Highlands fort and it actually protects quite a little bit as is the one in uh, Tilimchen. It protects quite a little bit and it is a Highlands fort. It basically prevents anyone from going into these lands without taking this fortification first. Siege is down. Buyashnokidongs and we have completed the unification. We just need to take out Morocco so let's bring our units there. Whenever that's done that would be amazing. Pacify the Berbers has been done. Traverse the Sahara. We need to have essentially a market place in here and then that's going to give us core and it's going to give us the two provinces here so we essentially get these two provinces for free and it's going to allow us to get into the gold mine rich central african part well technically this is west africa i guess right let's go ahead and check how much uh, crownlands we got now we have uh 20 percent awesome we're going to do this get one of these bad boys army bigger than aragon is easy and we're going to seize crownlands as well and we're going to fight those rebels over there we ended up with 25 percent crownlands in just seven years and the plus one mana privileges. Now let's give out the privileges, speaking of. Pretty standard, religious diplomats, clerical education. Probably want to wait with these uh, three uh, privileges until you get above 30 loyalty, though. So I'm going to do that. Grand court position after I get 30 loyalty. Otherwise, this is a debuff. Supremacy over the crown, of course. Increased levies for the extra manpower for our country. Private trade fleets. Merchant guild financial demand for the extra national tax. And in this case, we can give the uh, economic freedom since we already have above 30 loyalty with him. Also, let's not 
forget about the dimmies here. We want to make them happy too, right? We're going to give them liberties and I think that's about it for them. Maybe we'll get the leaders without upkeep plus one. Why not? And protected dimmy communities, I think, is good too. Get a new rival here. We can go for Morocco. Coco. Ooh, Ma Morocco. Ra, Ra, Morocco. Ra. Ooh, Morocco. Get that alliance. Hey, oh. Yo, Ottomans, can you actually win this war, please, and not lose? Otherwise, I'm going to be upset because I want to see you be a winner. There you go. We can get this uh, mission done then. Now we can do Conquest of Alexandria, and we also have to get some shipyards. And then we can do this mission too, too which is going to give us claims on Morocco, Garb, and Central Morocco. We also can get the uh, Hayreddin Barbarossa, which is Redbeard, the famous pirate. Redbeard, he was uh, he was basically a Berber pirate under the command of the Ottomans, if I'm not mistaken. And he was a as you would imagine a complete scumbag complete scumbag so we've used the free company but they have no more manpower pool so we're gonna be disbanding them otherwise they're just absolutely useless and we're gonna make full cores out of all the states we got and we're gonna get a new mercenary company we're gonna rely a little bit on mercenaries in this run especially in the early port when we have a really low manpower reality is that you can actually survive with mercenary companies all the way up until military tech 7 after which it starts progressively getting more expensive hiring mercenaries than just getting regular units wait what no no granada is still freaking alive dude i just saw it what oh my god oh my god i'm gonna make a little vassal yes i should have mentioned this before uh if you get a rival you can cancel the royal marriage without losing the uh, stability hit so keep that in mind that's why we didn't lose the stability hit from canceling the royal marriage with the moroccans also because we've uh, taken out all of our pirate competition in this area we pretty much can uh, have a stable supply of raids within the entirety of the Mediterranean now. And we've extended our range by getting the province of Sirte into uh, the uh, Black Sea as well. <laughs> pretty ironic how uh, the Middle Ages and, well, not necessarily just the Middle Ages, but the Berber nations themselves are a complete 180 turn from the ancient Carthaginians because the reality is that ancient Carthage did not really engage in slave trade as much as the Tunisians did. What we know about ancient Carthage is that they were a trading empire and they established one of the greatest and biggest fleets the ancient world had ever known based on the sole fact that they were a massive trader, especially in tin and bronze. They manufactured bronze with the tin that they were getting from especially the southern part of Iberia. Uh, they were getting uh, tin from the various cities in there and from the mines that they had. And then they were mixing that tin in with copper and making uh, bronze that they were afterwards trading to pretty much the entirety of the Mediterranean. We have archaeological uh, evidence that Carthaginian uh, bronze made its way all around the Mediterranean, right? So to go from a civilized nation or a civilized society or civilization, right? Civilized civilization that was known as being a safe haven for trading and for commerce to later down the line their descendants being the exact opposite being scumbag pirates is it's just it goes to show that you never know where the world's gonna be a hundred years from now right what if in 500 years from now the various nation states that will have sprung out of the united states for example become pirate nations right yeah i'm, I'm just kidding of course the u.s is never gonna rebel into 25 different states and destroy itself it's not gonna happen guys of course not that's just uh clearly not true now let's get back to our bees and schnapple dupes here we're gonna be lowering the autonomy everywhere that we can lower it we have to make full cores we haven't yet uh, got the admin points to make full cores out of all of our newly conquered states in fact admin is our bane we have still admin tech 3 we're pretty far behind with admin tech we got to catch up with that snap oh i just realized i can diplo vassalize these guys and i don't have a, an adjacent province to actually get the claim so i don't know what the hell i was doing there but that was not smart let's diplo vassalize them in that case hails to the yes get that diplo vassalicus maximus they're not really happy with us because uh, we did some covert actions against them and we got a little bit of aggressive expansion so we could have avoided that if i just paid attention to be fair oh no taffy you say once independence guaranteed 
and let's go with the war boys let's gucci von strombucci bring our fleet there as well so we get naval supremacy now these guys are still disloyal so as long as i do not go in the lands of these three vassals and i only stay in moroccan lands i only have to fight the 10,000 units that the moroccans have which is of course a very easy way of doing it and because morocco has less than 100 war score i can literally just do this boomia scabadoobs and then all of their vassals become my vassals because when you fully annex a nation you get all of their colonial nations all of their tributaries all of their vassals become yours so we're just taking advantage of the fact that the uh, portuguese and the castilians made the um the moroccans a little bit smaller i guess otherwise you wouldn't normally be able to do that which goes hand in hand with my saying of molding yourself on your particular rng okay do it we also have quite a little bit of prestige so let's get uh, rid of our air maybe we get somebody a little bit better anybody's better than that to be fair let's also get the uh, patronage of the arts to increase our prestige up to 12 so we're not too bad when it comes down to prestige right we want to keep our prestige high because it offers us a lot of goodies like uh, aggressive expansion impact reduction morale of armies navies trade power and so on now they also made the mistake of uh, trying to attack me in fig wig so i'm gonna do it myself give me the good dice rolls i need the good dice rolls we got the good dice rolls yay all right get out of my face morocco ma ma morocco get out of my face ma ma morocco hey morocco muhammad 331 he's better than the other guy it's fine i'll keep and we just got fez let's go ahead and siege down uh, the rest of the nation now oh shit these guys are now loyal i don't know how that happened but they're now loyal so i gotta siege down everything i had to siege down everything from before but the problem is that now the vassals are actually going to be fighting against me so i need to play this smart and attack them when they're divided not when they have one big blob like they have right now in uh, mike ness or i can fight the big blob if they're sieging down fez and then i get the defender advantage in the mountains and i'm gonna completely wipe them out there you go like this hell yeah baby kick me some moroccan ass please tell me that's the moroccan army it is okay we crushed the moroccan army which likely means these guys are gonna go back to disloyal very close to disloyalty very very close we need to just destroy a few more moroccan units i guess all right and we just got our vassal and granada now i'm thinking about the fact that getting four vassals from fully annexing morocco might be a little bit of an issue so let's see how we're gonna handle that oh my god i've got so many freaking rebels right now we got algerians we have jareds we got fezanis oh boy it's time we uh handle that situation isn't it and also the moroccan pretenders managed to take fez so we gotta take it back now actually you know what i'm gonna try something i'm gonna try something else. i'm not gonna get the vassals i'm gonna get instead this i'm gonna let them keep the coastline i'm only gonna get this i'm gonna let them uh keep that and the reason for this is because i don't want to have these freaking vassals i genuinely don't want to have these stupid ass vassals it's enough having granada okay we're gonna get other vassals in castile once we release uh what you call it um leon over here and feed them back the lands and so on right that's gonna be more than enough plus i don't want to have to deal with the freaking pretender rebels let the moroccans deal with the schnapps we're gonna deal with our own rebels right we're gonna use also our mana points to corrupt all of the stuff we just took look at us we've grown so much boyos yeah we really don't uh, we shouldn't underestimate the amount of rebels we got we got some more rebels in biskra as well now so um it's time to rebuild our nation for the next few years i assume or actually scratch that these guys are having the event the pretender rebels and a lot of issues overall so maybe I, this is the time to attack a steel because they only have 5,000 manpower this is definitely the time to the time to attack a steel i just realized okay that's what we're gonna do we're gonna be attacking them i'm gonna clean up my rebels and then afterwards i'm gonna get ready for that war we can also use our uh, mercenaries to attack and i just realized i forgot to get my uh raiding done I, i'm like six years behind on raiding no we lost so much money didn't we holy shit did i just get 120 freaking ducats from rome alone what can someone also explain to me how constantinople is still standing and it hasn't been attacked by the um by the ottomans yet the one time in which i actually have an ottoman ally that's when the ottomans decide to be poo poo brain isn't it i literally got close to a thousand ducats from just raiding the coastlines i am gonna get more than a thousand after i finish raiding all of the coastlines like this is genuinely insane to me a thousand ducats every 10 years from raiding the coastlines early game is just ridiculous my man yep look at that a thousand twenty three already and we can get more from uh, the portuguese coastlines too another 60 and oh imagine if we could uh use marines now that would be pretty freaking big brain since we have so many sailors 87 from this one holy snap let's start getting our spinet work over here i'm guessing one here as well since they're allied to the castolians and also seize crownlands we went up to 29 percent pretty juicy let's go ahead and hire some more uh, light ships we're gonna need to build a trade ship as well not just uh pirate ships right and by trade ship i mean trade fleet 
week. Words can be pretty difficult for me. I don't know. It's, uh, it's just one of those things. Grand company, again, useless. Let's hire somebody else. We're gonna go for the independent company, apparently. They're, they seem pretty handy, right? I like this mission here. So, building this marketplace in Tripoli is gonna give us these two provinces, colonize in hours, which allows us to connect ourselves to the um, African parts of Sub-Saharan Africa. And it is so significant because it signifies the trade between the North African nations and the Sub-Saharan and Berber nations via these small corridors that connected to completely different civilizations. Also love the fact that we have mostly mercenary armies. I mean, we've been relying on mercenaries this entire campaign, which also brings back to the fact that the Carthaginians of old times relied on mercenaries for the majority of their existence. Carthage city itself, which was the actual Phoenician colony and the heart of the Carthaginian Empire had its own armies, right, that defended the city and were actual Carthaginians, but the majority of their armies were actually Mauritanian mercenaries, Sub-Saharan mercenaries, even Italian and Greek mercenaries. It's really ironic, but the reason Carthage disappeared is because of its mercenaries. What do you mean by that, Ludi? It makes no sense! Hear me out. The reason the first Punic War happened with the Roman Republic, remember, there were three wars at the end of the Third War, Carthage was completely destroyed, it was salted, and later down the line, the Roman colony of Carthage was re-established with a Roman management and Roman citizens and administration in place over there. But the first Punic War between the uh, Carthaginians and the Romans started because of a mercenary company, an Italian mercenary company, namely the Mamertines, which were mercenaries from the Italian peninsula of very various origins, Samnites, uh, maybe even Latins and so on. Now these mercenaries were actually originally hired by Agathocles of Syracuse and when he passed away what happened is they decided to get their own city. So they grabbed themselves the city of Messana which I assume would be Messina in our case here. Now the Syracusians were obviously very pissed but the mercenaries had a plan so they sent letters both to the Romans and the Carthaginians asking for help right? And then the Carthaginians answered. The Romans at first didn't really give much of a schnapps, but eventually gained their own interest in this area. And when the Romans sent their own units, they actually found Carthaginians there and they started fighting the Carthaginians. By the way, I'm really oversimplifying now, but the point is that that initial spark was caused by these mercenary companies that the uh, Carthaginians technically, they didn't have anything to do with them, right? But there were still mercenary companies that count, okay? Be quiet now. Even though they were Syracusian uh, mercenaries. It's not the point. Really not the point. Mercenary started it all, okay? It's all because of the free company, I'm telling you right now. Anyway, that was the first Punic War. The end of the first Punic War saw the uh, foothold of the Romans in Messana, and of course their claims on Corsica, Sardinia, and so on. And then the second one, they grabbed the whole of Sicily, and basically, you know what happened after the second one, with the third one being the last one in which Carthage was sold. Now, we might not have the tin mines and the bronze production of the Carthaginians, but we do have the gold mine in Tafula. So we're going to be going ahead and we're going to encourage development here and we're going to be developing the schnapps out of this. Also going to be uh, accepting Moroccan. This is Moroccan, right? Yeah. I'm going to accept Moroccan as one of my accepted cultures and the Berbers, of course. And I'm going to be developing it a lot. Just need to make it a core first and foremost, though. Admin really has been my freaking bane, man. I'm still on Admin Tech 3 and I'm struggling to even core up everything. This is just, yeah. It's going to be very slow to get that Admin Tech up. <laughs> Let's go ahead and traverse the Sahara now since we got the... Uh, the marketplace in Tripoli and Daria Go Boys. We got uh, in Tajakhri and Jado. We've uh, gotten both of the provinces. I'm actually going to waste a little bit of my Diplo here and I'm going to convert this to Tunisian. So it's, I don't need to worry about, you know, separatist rebels here, even though there are none. I still want to make everybody Tunisian. Okay, shut up. Don't don't question it. Don't you freaking question it. I knew that one stability event is going to come with, uh, with a little bit of a catch, isn't it? So our current heir Mohammed dies and we get a mosque or he... What? He dies in the sixth... Uh, um, I'm sorry, Mo and this other guy is also Mohammed. Um, so I guess nothing happened. No we still have the same air, guys. Okay, now it is time to declare the war. I'm gonna bring this guy back here and let's attack Yes Maximus. They are actually right now at war with the English because they're attacking the English crown for the wait, what French reconquest of Bordeaux? Oh shit, England's attacked by both the French and the Castilians. Oh, that explains why the Castilians got so brave all of a sudden, if you ask me, you know. Anyway, let's also make the 
Sick is still in our rivals. And let's go ahead and attack them. Actually going to bring the mercenary companies here as well before I do start that war. We want to have a little bit of a foothold in um in Castile if we can. We cannot bring the 20,000 strong um free co independent company because we don't have that many transport ships. Problem is I need to take the forts in the south really fast so I can start transferring my units between the two continents. I don't have that much of a fleet so it might end up being an issue because they have heavies. I got no heavies. Let's set the war goal as Malacca and Buyashnokos. Go, 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 go. Everybody rush B, rush B. And by B, I mean Malaga. Malaga. I would love to get my fleet in here. Let's see if the Castilians are going to challenge us. Or maybe we can just slowly wipe out their fleets whenever they're not looking. Maybe that's going to be the play. Oh, I just realized I actually have permanent claims on this area. So I don't need to get the claims on uh, air. What was I doing, bro? Okay, that was a successful battle. We destroyed one of their heavies and six other ships and we lost none. We actually gained a heavy. Oh, yeah, baby. Now, we also can and we will be barraging both of the forts so we can take these a little bit quicker. This way, uh, once we've taken the forts, we can consolidate our units and merge them up so we can fight against the enemy with 40,000, not with 20,000. The added benefit of controlling the strait over here is that it makes it easier for us to take the fortification they have and it's making it harder for them to take the fortifications that we have by the coastline with this particular province here. And that means we can also wipe out their army in uh, North Africa. Africa, significantly improving our odds of winning this war now. Bye-bye, Castolians. It was nice knowing you, but you need to pass away. Wait, what? We destroyed another army? Where? Wait, actually, where? I thought I saw another event that we destroyed another army, didn't we? Oh, no, it was the event that we took the fort. Oh, hell yeah, baby. All right, cool. So that means we can attack their army over there. Uh, Actually, I'm going to siege this down first, and then we're going to attack the army they have sieging down a uh, Gibraltar because we're going to attack with 40,000 and maybe even stack wipe their troops. Let's see. That would be awesome. Then we can just carpet seed Spain quickly and do our peace deal. Okay, even better. We can do this. Attack these guys and these guys at the same time so they cannot re- Oh, no, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's really bad. I timed that really badly. I timed that really badly, but hopefully we managed to reinforce this in time. We have the defender advantage here, so we should be okay-ish. Ah, man, I shouldn't have been so greedy. If I wasn't so greedy, we could have wiped out their whole army. Ah, man. Hindsight Hindsight's, hindsight's 2020, isn't it? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Hindsight's 2020. Where does that even come from? So we stumbled upon the fact that the the English are trying to get the city of Toledo. So I'm going to let them do that. I'm actually going to go back a little bit and get rid of my rebels that just spawned and get the fort in uh, Tangiers. And whilst that happens, hopefully we get Evora too. So we can uh, peace out the, the Portuguese. We'd like to get the two cities in the south here. Plus, give this back to my Granada vassal and take that to Afar itself. 41 aggressive expansion. Overall, it's not really as bad as it might seem like it is. All right, so by getting a naval blockade, they're also starting to siege on their capital. We have the war score. We need to piece them out. So let's do that. We can get a little bit of money as well. Juicy as Shanaps. All right, now we can focus primarily on the Castilians. We don't need to worry about the um, the Portuguese anymore, do we now? Castilians only have how many units? They got 26,000 and we have double that. Oh my God. And they finished their war with the English, which I'm assuming they lost because they didn't take the province Labourd, right? So yeah. Toledo has fallen. Should make a movie out of that. Sounds like a movie name to me. All right, let's go ahead and get our new agenda and we're going to go for production in Tunis. Sounds good to me. Actually. Also, since we now have this as a full court, let's develop the gold mine in Tafilal to 10 production. We're going to do the same to our next gold mine in La Mancha. We're going to dev this up to 10 production, but I think the first war deal we're going to do like this so we can form Al Andalus after we do the peace treaty. These are all the provinces we need in order to form Al Andalus. We're actually very close to getting our peace deal enforced 130 136 we just need to siege down a couple more provinces actually that is it nothing else they're tired of being at war with the greatest nation the world has ever seen eh? mm -hmm. wait this is a core of granada too no what the hell man i don't want to give this to granada then oh that's to i was giving that to morocco this whole time are you kidding me bro no i don't want to give it to morocco come on <laughs> I genuinely thought I'm giving it to Granada, guys. I actually thought I'm giving it to Granada. <laughs> Good thing I checked, you know, before I was going to be, like, really pissed at uh, the world's worst peace deal, right? Come on. 123, 128 now. Can you just give me what I want, Castile? Give it to me. Give me. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it to me. Do we need to really stack wipe your armies? Okay. How about now? You got 8,000 somewhere. I don't know where those are. But 138, 112 means you giving me what I want. And that's going to be a little bit of a coalition. But guess what? This is the face 
of somebody who don't give a schnapps, okay? I do not give a schnapps, boys. I don't. Look at that. We have all the provinces we need to form uh, Al Andalus now. Let's go ahead and get rid of a new wave of rebels that just spawned. We need to also make cores out of those lands before we um, we actually form Al Andalus. So keep that in mind. And we also need to lower that overextension as well. Oh boy. Yeah. Coring this up with extra coring cost. That is what it is, unfortunately. But hey, the Ottomans are doing great. They are basically raffle stomping over the Venetians. So everything is getting back into shape. They crushed the Byzantines finally, and they're doing pretty good overall. So if anything, the coalition tries to trigger, they have to fight both us and the uh, Ottomans. So we're pretty freaking good. Now, by getting most of the lands that the Carthaginians had, we've pretty much revived their honor. Honor early, we've revived it, right? Technically, we also form Andalusia. So um, I guess by forming Andalusia, we've kind of become Carthage. I wish you could actually form Carthage in E4. That would be pretty cool to see. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, let me know if you want me to do more similar half history, half E4 bits in the future. And until the next time, check out this awesome Brandenburg video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.